Photography Part 2. Review this lecture after reading Chapter 1, Photography and Understanding Movies. Use the film grammar sheet in the module on D2L to aid in the note-taking process. View the supplemental videos to enhance the lecture. Film formats. Choosing a format of a film is a very important part of a cinematographer's job. Let's explore different formats of film. Each format comes with its list of pros and cons. Larger film formats like IMAX, 65mm and larger, pros, high resolution meaning great detail and clarity, another pro, can be projected on large screens without losing clarity and sharpness. Con, very expensive. Films with limited budgets can't afford IMAX, another con. Heavy, less portable equipment than other formats. Here are two examples of different IMAX cameras. Take some time to look at this side-by-side -side comparison of an IMAX format that's 70 millimeter on the right and then the same image in a 35 millimeter format. It shows the differences in the frame size and the resolution. Thirty-five millimeter is still the most popular choice of feature films, films made for theatrical release. Think about the size differences and weight differences from the IMAX format. Thirty-five millimeter is smaller and lighter, but it's still expensive and heavy compared to smaller and digital formats. Sixteen millimeter, choice of independent filmmakers on a limited budget. Spike Lee shot his first feature, She's Gotta Have It, on 16mm. The small light cameras enable movement and shooting without heavy equipment. While less expensive than IMAX and 35mm, 16mm lacks the resolution of larger formats. Super 8. Before VHS and digital video cameras, Super 8 format was used for home movies. It was never designed to be used for theatrical releases. The small lightweight camera allows for movement and handheld photography. While this may not be in wide use, it's still used in music videos and avant-garde film. Digital format, pros, less light sensitive than film, smaller, lighter, and faster than most film formats. Cons. Affordable digital format lacks film's resolution and it doesn't have the same look as film. Side by Side is a documentary that compares the differences between photochemical film and digital filmmaking. Students are encouraged to watch this illuminating film. Focal Length. The lens choice is a very important part of a cinematographer's job. We'll cover three types of lenses, a normal or 50 millimeter lens, a wide angle lens, which is smaller than 50 millimeters, and a telephoto lens that's larger than 50 millimeters. Be sure to read about this in chapter one. It covers this topic in greater detail. Each lens has its own characteristic effect on the image. Normal lens properties produces a minimum amount of distortion, how the human eye would perceive a scene, often used in the style of realism and documentary filmmaking. A normal lens would be the default lens on your phone or a camera that doesn't have interchangeable lenses. Wide angle lens properties. A wide angle lens creates a deep depth of field it preserves sharpness in all distances of the frame. It creates a wide field of view or more peripheral space, so the areas on the sides of the frame. It creates a three-dimensional look by exaggerating the distances between objects and subjects within the frame. Movement towards or away from the camera is exaggerated. Let's take a look at the same image composed with a wide angle lens on the left and a telephoto lens on the right to explore 
a deep depth of field. In the image on the left, if we counted back how many crayons were clear, sharp, and in focus, it would be about one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. You can take a look at the negative space or the shadows under the crayon to help establish what's in focus. Compare that to the telephoto lens composition on the right, the shallower depth of field, where really only two crayons are clear, sharp, and in focus. An example of a wide angle lens composition from Citizen Kane. Important information is visible in the foreground, middle ground, and background. Telephoto lens properties. A telephoto lens will give us the opposite properties from a wide angle lens, so it creates a shallow depth of field preserving sharpness in only one plane of focus. It flattens the image, making it more two-dimensional. Movement towards or away from the camera is less apparent, and it creates a narrower field of view, so the areas around the frame are compressed. The telephoto lens composition in the still from Jackie Brown on the top creates a single plane of focus. The area behind the character's head is out of focus. The telephoto lens composition in the still from the aviator helps to isolate the important subjects there in the middle ground within the frame. Compare and contrast the differences. In each image, the woman is standing in the same place Notice how the wide angle lens and telephoto lens impacts the image. Let's compare the differences between the wide angle lens composition on the top from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and the telephoto composition on the bottom from Gladiator. The wide angle lens creates a deep depth of field it places the characters in an environment. The telephoto composition creates a shallow depth of field. It places an emphasis on the subject, establishing his power. Camera angle, the relationship between the subject and the viewer. A camera angle is named for the position of the camera. Low angle shot emphasizes a character's power and superiority and can make them appear threatening. Dominance. Leatherface is clearly a scary guy. The low angle composition helps to establish his dominance. Authority and control. Shaft is a good guy. His power and authority is established through this low angle composition. High angle shot, subject seems weak, powerless, perhaps depressed. Weakness, Antonio and his son Bruno look sad and vulnerable because of this high angle composition. Eye level shot, no visual superiority or inferiority, a neutral composition, often a realist tendency. Bird's eye view, extreme high angle, somewhat disorienting because it's not the way we normally see things. Bird's eye view angles are often a formless tendency, like in this fantasy shot of Angela from American Beauty. Oblique or canted angle shot image appears less stable. It's off balance and might suggest a state of flux. Camera movement. Understanding movies covers camera movement in chapter three. 
We'll cover conventional camera movements here. View the videos in the supplemental playlist. Pan. The camera is on a tripod and moves on its axis from left to right or right to left. It's a horizontal camera movement. It might follow the action in a scene. Tilt. The camera is again on a tripod. It's a vertical movement of the camera, tilting up or down. It's fluid and smooth. Dolly shot. Filmed from a moving vehicle or cart, the camera movement is fluid and smooth. Tracking or trucking is a common way to refer to a dolly shot that follows a subject. steady cam shot. You see the man there has a harness on and the camera is attached to his body with a monopod. It combines the fluidity of a dolly and the freedom of a handheld shot. Crane shot, named for the piece of equipment the camera is placed on. It's a very dynamic camera movement. It changes the position and the angle of the camera. Zoom shot. The position of the camera does not change. A zoom shot is created with the lens and it can be jarring. Unlike the dolly and crane shots, the zoom movement changes the depth of field. Handheld shot uses no stabilizing device. There is a noticeable shaking of the camera. Handheld shot is often a realist tendency used in documentaries and fiction films done within the style of realism. Aerial shot, called an establishing shot when it's the opening shot of a film. Traditionally, Helicopters are used for aerial movement. New technology like drones allow for greater mobility. This aerial establishing shot provides a large amount of visual information and establishes the setting. Did you know The Shining begins with an aerial establishing shot? Why not check it out? This week's assigned film is Rabbit Proof Fence directed by Philip Noyce, released in 2002. This is our first example of a film made outside of the United States. It's an Australian film, and it's also a film that deals with a historical and cultural event. Response questions. Choose one of the questions and respond to it. There's a presentation in the module on D2L that aids in the process of writing this response paper. Please be sure to view it before uploading a response. Question one. How does the use of the wide angle lens enhance the storytelling in rabbit proof fence? Question two. How does the camera movement and or Camera angles enhance the storytelling in Rabbit Proof Fence. Be sure to give specific examples from the film and use the film grammar from this particular lecture. There's a film grammar sheet in the module on D2L to help with the film grammar. Films featured in this lecture. Students are encouraged to explore these films. You can pull the PDF version of this lecture up on D2L to take a closer look. I thank you so much for watching, and until next time, have a productive week.